Welcome to our introduction to Zotero workshop. My name is Chelsea and I am the public services librarian here at the Grenfell campus. So I use Zotero a lot in my own academic work, in my own research, and I teach it very, very frequently for faculty, for students, for anyone who's interested in learning about citation management. So today we're going to discuss, first of all, uh, what a citation manager is, what it actually does. Then we'll dive into getting started with Zotero. We'll talk about how to add citations from OneSearch and from other web sources into our Zotero library. And then we'll discuss how to use that Zotero library. We'll talk about editing and organizing sources, adjusting our preferences within the Zotero library, and then finally taking all of that information and putting it into bibliographies. This could be in Microsoft Word or in Google Docs. There are many ways that we can do that. All right. Before we begin, I have a task for everyone. I'm going to paste in the chat the Zotero download link. So from this link, there are two things that you'll need to download. And you can do this while I talk about the next couple of things. You don't need to be looking at uh, my presentation slide for this next little bit. What I want you to do is download, if you have not already, Zotero for either Windows or for Mac. It will pop up depending on what computer you're on. You have to download the standalone library, which is on the left, and the Zotero connector for whichever browser you're working in. Both of those are important steps, and those are the first steps that you need to take to use Zotero. So that's step one. I know that we're all attending this presentation virtually today. It might be tricky to have multiple windows open, especially if you're working from one screen. So if you wanna go ahead and download this material now, you can just listen to the next little bit without having to pay too much attention to the screen. And then I'll make sure we're all paying attention when I start going over some more detail. Because now we're just gonna talk about some of the basics of what a citation manager is and how Zotero roughly functions. So if you download the standalone library and the Zotero connector, that's step one. Step two would be creating a free account. You don't need to do this for today's session, but it's something that I recommend after today's session is done. So creating a free online account allows you to sync your library on the web and on your desktop. So regardless of where you are, you can access your library of saved material. This is great if you work on multiple devices. Creating this free online account also allows you to create shared libraries with other researchers. You both just have to log into your Zotero account and then you'll be able to access your shared material. Through creating an account, you can also link up your Zotero library with Microsoft Word. When you log in, you'll be able to have the two pieces of software connect and speak to each other uh, and you'll be able to integrate your bibliographies seamlessly. So that is an important step um, and that can be synced to your library later. Uh, so it doesn't need to be done right now. And if you run into trouble with that down the line, you know where to find me. We're gonna begin now by talking about what a citation manager actually is. And we've learned that about half of us in the room today have used one before and half of us have not. So a citation manager generally is something that collects the metadata the information about your information from any resource that you're interested in using for your research. So it will collect things like the uh, item type. So if it's a journal article, it will say this is a journal article. It'll capture the title of that article, all of the author names, the abstract. It will also catch the journal title, um, any numbers or issues, the DOI, the URL, and it can take all of this information to create a citation. It can also collect the PDF copy of an article. So everything kind of lives in one place. It's a way that you can collect, organize, and format your citations and have them all in their own library. So this is a screenshot of my own Zotero library here. And you can see it's full of a wide array of sources and they're all organized in a number of different ways. And this is one of the things that I love about Zotero because it captures all of this data, but then it allows you to organize it really extensively. So I can organize all of my information into different folders for different projects that I'm working on um, and different folders that I can then share with different team members if I'm interested in doing so. 
Of course, it also automatically generates in-text citations and works cited lists. And like I mentioned, this can be done with a direct Microsoft Word or Google Docs plugin. It's also a really useful tool for, um, of course, large projects with many, many references. And this was one of the things that we were interested in today was how we can handle a really large volume of information. Uh, but it's also really handy to keep track of articles that you might want to read and want to return to in the future because there is a built-in PDF reader and annotation tool. Again, this is kind of an all-in-one really comprehensive piece of software. So frequently I will save articles that I don't have time to read right now, but I know I want to read them in the future for my own research. So I will save them to Zotero and I can access them a little bit later. I know they're safe and they're organized in my own library. Okay. So now we're going to talk about actually using Zotero. So I hope you've had a chance to download Zotero. You've downloaded the standalone library. You've downloaded the web plugin. We're going to talk about how to actually use it. So the first step is to open the library. So for me, Zotero is right here. This is my library. I already have a lot of materials saved to my library. I need to have this open when I use the web browser plugin so that I'm saving items into the library. It will not allow me to save items if my library is not open somewhere on my computer. So that's step one, make sure it's open. Step two is to save from the browser. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. I have a OneSearch list of results already open on my computer. So I went to the library website, I ran a search, and now I have a number of results. What do I do now? First, I have my library open. I have it open somewhere on my computer, and it's ready to go. Now I installed that browser plugin and it appears in this top corner of my screen. So here it might appear rather small. It's a little yellow folder icon and it says save to Zotero. It might also appear under this puzzle piece in your web browser. This is uh, the stand in for any extensions that you might have um, already saved to your browser. I have Zotero pinned to my browser so that I can see it at all times. Now, the tricky thing with Zotero is that this button, right now it looks like a yellow folder, might look different on different sources. I like to say Zotero is a master of disguise. So if I am on this list of sources, and maybe there are a number of things here that are of interest to me, I can click on this yellow folder, and there's a pop-up window that I get. This allows me to select any of the items from this list to add to my Zotero library. So if I know that I like this source and this source and this source, I can select them, click OK, and it says saving to my library. It's that easy. I just saved three sources to my Zotero library. And if I open up my Zotero library, I can see I have one, two, three new sources that I added today on October 4th right up at the top of my library. So that's one way that you can save sources to your Zotero library. Let's say I'm interested in something more particular. I click on this item because this is a book that I'm interested in. So now I'm on the individual record page within the library. You can see my icon up at the top now looks a little different. It looks like a book. And this is because, again, Zotero is a master of disguise. It changes what it looks like depending on the resource that you're using. So if I were to click on it here, it would recognize this as a book. And now, again, it saves that item to my library. It is that easy. If you're on something other than the library website, So here I'm on a YouTube video. You'll notice, again, the icon has changed. Now it looks like a little webcam. But that, again, allows me to save to Zotero. Zotero is an excellent tool because it's really good at saving material from a variety of web resources. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now it's saving this YouTube video to my library. If I, again, go back to my library, I can see up at the top, there's the video that I'm saving, how to find articles in Harvard Business Review. Again, I'm on an article here. This is from the student newspaper, The Muse. Here, the icon again looks a little different, but again, it's saved to Zotero. If I hover over it, it says save to Zotero. 
And this is something, again, it might be hiding under your puzzle piece of extensions. It will say Zotero connector. You click that button and it will save it to your library. Now, one thing to note, because you're just starting out with Zotero, it's unlikely that you have a number of different folders already existing. But if I were clicked on a different folder, its default would be to save to that folder. So I'll click again and you can see now it says, oh, it still says my library. But if you click on that drop down, you'll be able to choose a folder if there is a specific folder that you want to save within. But that's something that we can worry about another time. All right, I'm just going to check on our participants here, make sure we have everyone in. It looks like we have a couple people who are joining us, and that's perfectly fine. Oh, apologies here. Let me stop my phone for a moment. Okay. All right, so I'll return back to the slide deck here because I will be sending this slide deck to everyone. And you can see I have some screenshots showing exactly what I've just demonstrated live. So here we have that little yellow icon up at the top. That's the folder. So when you're looking at a list of items, you may see the folder. And that will allow you to choose items individually from a list that you can then add to your library. You might see a book icon. You might see a sheet of paper. When you click that button, no matter what, it will be sending it to your library and you can choose a specific folder if you wish. Again, this is what it looks like with a YouTube video and this is what it might look like on a different news page. Sometimes the icon changes a little bit. So for everyone here, I want to take a couple minutes where you can play around with this a little bit and just start adding a little bit of material to your library. So I'm going to go ahead and start this timer so that we can well, in theory, we're going to start a timer. I'm going to keep an eye on the clock. We're going to have two minutes. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. And yeah, take some time to explore. So in the chat, I can see the first question here is, in my library, I do not see the same tabs at the top as you. Is this because I am using a Mac? Yes, I do think there is a difference between um, what the PC version looks like and what the Mac version looks like. Um, if you want to send me an email, I'll put my email in the chat. I would love it if you could send me a screenshot of what it looks like, because if you have any specific questions about uh, what, what's going on with your version, uh, it'll be easiest for me to address if I can see what it is. So I will put my email in the chat here. And yes, thank you for the follow up there. If you could send along a screen capture, uh, whether that's to me or if you want to share it with the group, totally your call. Um, but I'd be really curious to see what it looks like on a Mac versus a PC. So by my clock, I'm going to give us one more minute to experiment, add some material to uh, your Zotero library, and then we will get back to the presentation. Okay, so hopefully you've had some time to explore your Zotero library, maybe add a few items in there using your web plugin. We're going to continue forwards now to talk about how we can edit and organize the sources that we pull into our Zotero library. So when we're looking at the Zotero library, it looks something like this, and I know this is kind of an overwhelming image to be looking at here. That's because I have tons of material saved into my Zotero library. This is a screenshot from a little while ago, um, but I wanted to use this because it's really large. It's a little easier to see, and I want to explain all the different moving pieces that we have on the go here. So I'm going to look at this from right to left. So on the right hand side in your library, when you click on an item, you will notice all of the metadata is listed here. 
So on the right hand side is where you find the most detailed information about your particular source. So this is where you have the item type listed, the title of whatever the piece is, any authors, the abstract. We have the publication name here, the volume, pages, date, etc. This is all of the detailed information that Zotero has captured about your resource. All of these fields can be clicked on and edited. So here you can see I clicked on uh, the volume because it was reading as volume zero, issue zero, and that's not correct. So if you ever notice um, any incorrect information included in your Zotero library, uh, you can just simply go in and change that information. I do encourage proofreading the material that comes in because Zotero does a really excellent job, but it's not always perfect. So I would recommend taking a quick look, seeing if it makes sense, because this is the information that it's going to use to generate your citations. So proofreading, maybe also double checking for instances of all caps, things like that. That's usually a good thing to do. OK, so uh, you'll notice there are also notes, tags and related here. Uh, the ones that I want to talk about the most are notes and tags, and I'll pull up my library for this. So I'll make this full screen and I'll go to my library, and these are some of the sources that I just saved. So here you can see I have this is indicated it's a blog post. I might want to change this because this was uh, from the student newspaper. So there, I clicked it, I changed it to newspaper article. I have all of the information that I need here, the title, the author, I have the publication, I have the date. Maybe I want to add a note. This can be for whatever purpose suits you, but if I click on this, I can say this is important or what have you, literally anything goes you can see it just appended a note to this item here. This can be really useful. So at a glance, you can see why you saved something into your library. Um, the note function can be whatever you make it, but I find it's really useful for quick little jot notes if you want a refresher on what a piece of information is, why you saved it into your library. If I click back on the main heading there, it takes me back where I have the options, info notes, tags, related. Tags are another way of organizing your information. So sometimes you'll find there are automatic tags that are pulled in. So here I'm on another source now. It's already got tons and tons of tags here. These are the tags that the database applies to that resource. This may not be helpful to you and you can just delete whichever ones are not useful. It's also not mandatory to use tags. But if you do decide to use one, you can click add and you can add whatever tag is useful for you. So you can see here I added a tag. Uh, it's organized it alphabetically, but it shows up in a different color. So I tag this as important. And if you want to search through tags, they exist in this bottom left corner here. If you click on one or if you search for it. So if I search for important, I can find my important tag. And then all the items that I tagged with important will pop up in that same search. So it's just one way that you might want to get a little extra organized in your research. Related allows you to link items to other items in your Zotero library. So for example, if I have this book here, Engaging Student Using Evidence to Promote Student Success, and I also had some book reviews of that book here. I could link that item to another item in my Zotero library so that I know that they're about the same thing. They're related to each other. They're talking to each other. I can link them together in my Zotero library. It's not essential, but those are extra things that you can do in this right-hand column. Primarily, you want to make sure that this is just correct metadata for the item that you've saved to your library. In this middle section here, this is like the big bulk of your library. This is where you have all of the individual records. So you can see as I click on each record here, all of the metadata on the right hand side changes. And this is where you can also find new ways to organize your information. So Tarot is just, it's the king of organization. So 
we can see everything here can be organized by title, creator, year. I think that's usually the default, but you can add a number of different things. So if you right click on the top of your Zotero library, let me minimize this here so that we can see it all on the same screen. You can see there are so many other columns that we can add here. So I always like to add the date added column because if I organize by this, which I have, if I click on it, it will organize all of this material so that all of the most recently added material shows up at the top of my library. I personally find that really useful. You can also add in the date that something was published. You can have item type. Basically, whatever is useful to you, you can add in. It just goes on and on. There are so many different things that you can include as a column. And if you click on that column, it will organize according to that field. So if I click on year, it will then organize by year and it'll be the most recently published material at the top. For me, I like date added as my method of organization. I'll pause here for a moment just to see what's been going on in the chat while I'm talking about uh, the Zotero library. So here we have a discussion about what's displayed in the Zotero library. Yes, so this is exactly what we're talking about here. So the tabs at the top of the library would include title and creator, but if you wanna right click um, or if you're on uh, a Mac, I believe it's command click, you should be able to pull up uh, a different list of items and you can then add those extra columns as well. Okay, so within this middle, middle section as well, you'll notice that there are a few buttons up at the top here. This first button is a useful one because especially if you're working with primary sources, if you're working with physical objects that you have around you and not web links that you're able to really quickly push a button and add to your library, you can add items manually. So this green button will pull up, let's say I wanna cite a book, it will give me a blank version of the template it uses to gather information for a book. So I could then consult my book and I could say, okay, this is the title, this is the author, um, blah, 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 blah. I could go on with all the rest of the information that I need and I could add that in manually. That's how you do that. Of course, there are many different kinds of resources that you might need to cite here and it has templates for all of them. So I think that's probably uh, one of the more useful buttons that exists here. There's also an option here to add an item by identifier. So if you know the DOI of an item, if you have the ISBN of a book, you can type that in and it will probably retrieve accurate information for you as well. That might be a little bit faster. This is an additional way here to add a note to an item. So we already talked about adding a note on the right hand side. You can add it from the top as well. And there are two options here. You can either add a child note, which is what we've already done. So it's a note that's appended to a particular item. So here I have one that's attached to the article, five study tips and tricks, or you can create a standalone note. And this could be maybe a reminder to you, yourself, reminder to find an article about whatever your topic is. And you can see it pops up in the library and you can quickly see at a glance, okay, I need to find this kind of information. You can also add attachments here. So if you have maybe a PDF saved on your computer that you wanna to add to a file, you can do that as well. And then this is an advanced search. So if you have a really extensive library and it's getting tricky to find what you're actually looking for in your library, using the search to find some material might be useful for you as well. Of course, there is a search bar available here and it will search through all of the material that you're looking for. It's also another way to look up tags if you are interested in using tags to organize your library. But now we'll move on to the left-hand side here. And I'm gonna go ahead and minimize some of this so we're not quite so distracted. On the left-hand side, you can see there is this yellow folder icon. This stands for new collection and this is how you make a new folder to organize your material. So I'm going to make my example folder. I type in a name and you can see it takes me automatically to this new folder and there's nothing in it. If I want to add the material that I just found, I can drag and drop it over to my folder. 
And now notice it doesn't disappear from the main library. It will always be in the main library. But it also now exists in my folder. So you can drag and drop material from your main library into as many different folders as you like. So if you have multiple projects on the go that make use of the same sources, but you have separate folders for those projects to stay organized, you can drag and drop to all of those folders and that's perfectly OK. You can also make subfolders. So if you right click on a folder, you can create new sub collection. So. More specific example. And now you can see I have a subfolder within my folder, so you can endlessly organize your material in your Zotero library. This brown button here, new library, allows you to create shared collections. This does require using the free Zotero account, so you will need to register before you are able to do that. But that is a very simple process online and I have linked to it in the slide deck. I do want to mention down here we have duplicate items as another uh, option in the left hand panel. So Tarot does a pretty good job of capturing instances of the same item being saved more than once. So in my example, I clicked on the same item twice. I did it in the list and then I did it individually. I can check the metadata for both of these items and decide, yep, they're exactly the same and merge so that I don't have duplicates of material taking up extra space in my library. If you do delete something accidentally, so if I go into my library, let's say I accidentally delete this, I can either click the delete button or I can say move item to trash after right clicking. It isn't totally gone. It will live in my trash and it's right here with all of the notes and everything I appended to it. I can right click it and click restore to library. So you're never going to lose material that you delete unless you actively delete it from your trash, which is kind of reassuring. We can't make mistakes here. All right, I'll pull up our slide deck one more time here. This is a summary of all of the material that I have just walked us through. So we do have a lot of information in this slide deck. One thing that I do want to highlight as well is that when you're looking at an item that's particularly interesting to you. If a PDF has been retrieved and it's an automatic setting, it will retrieve PDFs for you. You can click on that PDF and it will open within Zotero. It will allow you to annotate however you like. You can highlight, you can add notes. You can use Zotero again in so many different ways, but I find being able to read it within the same place where you're saving that material can be really, really useful. I do want to talk a little bit about the top menu before we move on and practice doing some of this and playing around with the library ourselves. So I want to talk about going under edit and preferences to adjust some of our settings. And there are a few things that I want to touch on here. So you can see in my library. Edit is up at the top. If I click on edit down at the bottom, I can see preferences. And I get a whole bunch of options that pop up. First, I want to talk about the general tab under general. It should automatically be checked off. The option to automatically attach associated PDFs and other files when saving items. That is what will allow you to automatically retrieve all of those full text articles whenever they're available. Highly recommend leaving that checked off. The only reason you might not want that is if you are working on something like a systematic review, you're pulling in thousands of items into your library, the PDFs will take up a lot of storage space. So you might want to uncheck that box if that's the kind of project that you're working on. Also within the preferences tab, this is where you can link your account. When you do make an account, you of course won't have your username in here just yet, but you'll have the option. There will be a, a link account button. And so you can click that button and then put in your email, your password that you made on Zotero.org, uh, and it will then sync your account. I do recommend sync automatically and sync full text content. That makes sure everything that's in your library is constantly up to date when you are adding more material online. The next couple things will be more uh, important for the next part of our presentation. 
Uh, and that's about creating those bibliographies and works cited lists and in-text citations and all that fun stuff. And that's where we get into the export and the cite buttons. All these do, they allow you to choose the citation style that you are working in. So there are a lot of different citation styles available here. Um, the most popular, of course, are probably going to be American Psychological Association, that's APA, or um, the Modern Language Association, 9th edition, that is MLA. So choosing either of those here, and then also choosing it under cite, will ensure that you are getting a uniform citation, um, uniform citation style, no matter how you're exporting your citations. So again, that's under edit and that's under preferences. Okay, we're gonna take a couple minutes now. And again, I will keep an eye on the clock um, as the timer doesn't appear to be working today, but I would love for you to customize your library here. So if you wanna take some time, you can play around with any of the items that you pulled into your library, maybe double check some of the metadata that appeared on the right hand side here maybe add any notes if that's of interest. And if you add a note again to get back to that main page, you can just click on the item in the middle and it will return you to uh, the main tabs that you have on the right side here. You can also play around with creating some folders using that yellow button on the top left side. And it functions kind of like, uh, like iTunes creating playlists. I know we all use Spotify more often these days, but back in the good old days of iTunes, you would have your library and you could create as many playlists as you wanted with that song. It would never disappear from your library. It would just always be there. All of the items in your Zotero library function the same way. When you add them to folders, it's like making a playlist. You can add it to as many as you like. So I'll give us another minute and we can continue exploring, playing around with our own Zotero libraries. If you have any questions, please feel free. You can toss them in the chat. You can toss them in Mentimeter. I'll be keeping an eye on that for the next minute until we continue with the next portion of the presentation. Okay, so this is a good question from a Mac user. Um, you're unable to find properties. So that's a very good question. I will look into that and I'll send an email out to the group after today's presentation because it does look a little different uh, using Mac versus PC. But something that you might wanna do, and I can do that live on the screen here, is even just Google Zotero for Mac. Um, because some of the functionalities are a little bit different. And there are many guides that exist from Zotero that are really, really useful. So I want to double check here. It looks like it's under Zotero and then preferences. So if you want to check that, if you have um, your bar up at the top with all of your different options, Instead of edit, if you click on Zotero, that should take you to preferences. Let me know if that works. Okay, so for anyone who's trying the Mac version, have you been able to access it under Zotero and then preferences? Yes, okay, wonderful. 
So that's one of the things I'd really like everyone to take away as well, is that there is a lot of documentation about Zotero that exists on their website. So sometimes doing a quick Google search for Zotero and then looking for their own forums and their own results, uh, their documentation is really, really useful. And I, I do this all the time when I'm supporting people who use a Mac because it does look a little bit different and I don't have the Mac myself. So awesome. I'm so glad that that's working for everyone. Thank you for letting me know in the chat. I do really appreciate that. We're going to move forwards now to perhaps the most exciting part of today's presentation, and that's incorporating everything in a bibliography. And there are three ways that we can generate bibliographies or generate citations. So the first thing we need to do, as I mentioned before, is to adjust your preferences. So if you're working on Windows, that will be under Edit and Preferences. If you are working on a Mac, as we just learned, you're going to want to go to Zotero and then go down to Preferences in your menu. When you're there, you're going to want to adjust Export to whatever citation style you're working in. So for me, I'm going to use MLA. And then also adjust it under Cite, because this is the part that connects with a word processor. So this is the part that will integrate with Microsoft Word when you have an account. Uh, this is also what will work with Google Docs when you have an account. And so here you would want to just choose the same one. So Modern Language Association for me. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Once your preferences are set, then there are a couple of things you can do. You can drag and drop an item from the center panel of your library into a Word document for a full citation. If you hold down the Shift key while you do that, you'll get an in-text citation. So let me demonstrate what that looks like. So I have a blank Word document here, and I have my Zotero library. I'm interested in citing this particular piece. I'm just going to drag and drop it over, and look at that. It formatted a citation for me. This is for a YouTube video. I might need to edit it a little bit, but it saves a lot of time. Let's try it with another resource here. Let's try it with, let's see. Let's try it with this book. I'll drag and drop, and look at that. We have the author's name. It's inverted the way that it should be. We have the title in italics. We have the uh, publisher available to us, and we have the year. So this is great. It's formatting the citations for us. Again, you're always going to want to proofread the citations because in case we missed some details in the metadata here, we might need to double check uh, what it is that uh, Zotero is putting out for us. But I'll show you one more time. I'll just drag and drop from the library, and this time it's an article. So we have the author, we have the article title, we have the journal title, the volume, the issue, the date, we have the pages, and we also have where this information came from. If I wanted an in text citation, let's say I'm writing a wonderful sentence here and I need to cite where this information is coming from, I can always let's minimize this a little bit more here. I can hold down the shift key and drag and drop to the end of my sentence and it formats it as an in-text citation. I then just need to include the page number that I got this from because of course it won't know what page I'm referencing. That's one way that you can generate citations using Zotero. You can also create a bibliography from a large number of items in your library. So this often works really well if you have a folder of material and you want to just cite everything that's in that folder, create a bibliography of everything you have in that folder. You can select as many sources as you wish from your center panel and then right click those items, select create bibliography from items, and then copy it to your clipboard and just paste it into a document. So I'll show you what that looks like as well. So let's say I have, let's use my librarianship folder. I have a lot of material here. I'm going to select everything. So I click on the first item and then I hold down the shift key and click on the last item. And that allows me to select everything. I have 33 items selected. If I right click here, I have the option of create bibliography from items. If I click on that, it'll double check with me. Okay, what style do you want? I want MLA. 
I want a bibliography and I want it copied to my clipboard so I can just paste it into my document. I'll click OK. And now in my document, I will paste it in and look at that. I have a full bibliography. It's in alphabetical order. It's formatted the way that I need it to be formatted. I would then go through and proofread this material to make sure that it is exactly what I'm looking for. But this is really a huge time saver. I don't have to go in and manually do a lot of this uh, preliminary work. The final method for generating citations is to use the plugin with Microsoft Word or with Google Docs. It exists in both places. This does require an account. But once you do download Zotero and you have an account, the next time you open Microsoft Word, you'll see a Zotero button up at the top here. If I click on Zotero in my top ribbon in Microsoft Word, I now have a few options. Under document preferences, this would be, I believe this is where you can then sign into your account in Microsoft Word. That'll make sure that it's totally synced up and ready to go. If I click on it now, it's just confirming my citation style because I'm already logged in. So let's say I'm writing something very clever and I need to cite it. I can click on add edit citation. When I do this, I have a search bar that pops up. If I know who the author is of the piece that I want to cite, if I know the uh, name of the article that I want to cite, I can just start typing it in here and it will give me a list of suggestions. So if I just start typing in a random name, it'll give me a list of items that you can see here. But let's say I don't remember what it is. I just know it's in my library. I can click on this Z and click Classic View, and now it shows me a little mini version of my library. So I can go searching through. I want to cite, yeah, let's go back to my librarianship folder. Let's say I want to cite this article. I click on the article, and then I can also add the page number that I'm citing it from because it doesn't know which page number I'm referencing. So let's say I'm citing page 21 of this article. Again, I'm just making this up as I go. I'll go ahead and click OK. And look at that. I now have an in-text citation with the author's name and the page number. So I can keep writing. I can keep writing and maybe I need to cite something again. I'll go ahead and click Add Edit Citation. I'll go back into my classic view and I'll choose another item that I'm interested in citing. And let's say I'm citing page 60 of this article. There we go. I have the author name and I have the page number. So I can do that for my entire paper. And then it's time for me to add in my bibliography. Ideally, this is on another page, but for the sake of demonstrating, I'm just going to put it all in one spot here. When it's time for me to add my bibliography, if I've been adding my in-text citations by clicking this button, I can bring my cursor down to where I want my bibliography to start and then click Add Edit Bibliography. What it does is it goes back through the paper. It identifies which items I was citing in my in-text citations, and it automatically generates a bibliography using those sources. And it will update the bibliography as I add more. So let's say I need to add in a few extra sentences and I need to cite something else. I will click Add Edit Bibliography or Add Edit Citation, Classic View. I'll find another item here. Let's say I want to cite this article. I'm citing page three. Notice it just added this in-text citation and it added in an extra citation at the end of my bibliography where it fits alphabetically. So it's a really smart tool. It's wonderful and it's a huge time saver. And this way you won't ever forget. Did I cite something in text? Did I include it in the bibliography? They are linked together when you're using um, the, the Microsoft Word plugin. And Google Docs functions the same way. You'll have the same Zotero option up in your top ribbon, and you'll have the same buttons, add edit citation and add edit bibliography. So I have a few screen grabs that are going to be in the presentation for you. I will be sending it out at the end of the presentation today. This is just a reminder of how it functions when you're using it in Microsoft Word. So again, you want to go to the Zotero part of the ribbon, add edit citation. This is my note to remember to proofread because this was one that I had not double checked the metadata. 
uh, within my Zotero library. So I had not checked this information on the right hand side to make sure it was accurate first, because that's where it's drawing the information from. So I would need to remember I need to add in a page number and here I might need to check. Is it volume zero number zero? Probably not. I might need to double check that. OK, so we're going to take maybe two minutes now just to play around with the drag and drop method of generating some citations in a Word doc, in a Google doc, any spot where you can be writing. So if you haven't already formatted your citation style, it's under edit and preferences or Zotero and preferences, and then you'll see export and item format available to you. So play around with it. I'll demonstrate one more time what it looks like when you're dragging and dropping items into a Microsoft Word document. It's as simple as finding an item that you like, dragging and dropping, and it'll format it in whatever style you've told it to format it in. If you need an in-text citation, you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and drag and drop, and it will format that in-text citation, but you will need to add in the page number if there is a specific page number that you're citing. If there are any questions at this time too, this is a great time to toss any extra questions into the chat. We are approaching the end of today's presentation, but I'm glad to offer a little opportunity to get your hands dirty with Zotero to get some practice going on. All right, I'll give it just about a minute now. We can wrap up any playing around we're doing with creating our citations. And we'll move along with the presentation to a few final tips that I want to mention. So I will be sending out this presentation again to everyone who's registered for today's workshop. I've linked here Zotero's quick start guide and some of their screencast tutorials for more help in getting started. They have a lot of wonderful videos and documentation that can help you in getting off the ground with Zotero. They are excellent and they're really um, they're an open source um, piece of software. So a lot of people contribute to their forums. Um, and yeah, there is a ton of support that's out there. So their own resources are often really, really useful when you're getting going with Zotero. We also have a Zotero guide at Mun Libraries, and I've linked it here as well. It looks something like this, but it does run you through some of the basics of using Zotero. Uh, we do have some instructional videos available to you here and some more detailed information. Um, about a lot of the things that we've discussed in today's presentation. So I recommend taking a look at this guide as well, and it is linked for you in this slide deck. If you do have questions after today's presentation, my contact information is in the presentation. My name is Chelsea Humphreys. I'm the Public Services Librarian at the Grenfell Campus, and you can reach me at chumphreys at grenfell.mun.ca. I highly encourage you reaching out. I'd love to hear from you, and if you have more specific questions, uh, we can work on them together. 